It's, it's funny every time. It's funny every time. Like, waiting, waiting. You're like, I've got a friend. I don't know what to do. Uh, what's going on, man? How are you? Good. <laughs> you like my, you like my, right. tribu my, my tribute to Marco behind me? There you are. Pro probably uh, still got the same. This. You still got the Listen, same tearaways, probably. I, I only have two, <laughs> two like MMA pictures in my garage, you know, and I, that's one of them. <laughs> what's what's the what's the other? Uh, me kicking somebody in the head. Ah, uh, cool. Because <laughs> my two, my, t it's the one you're kicking Gavin in the head. I'm guessing, right? Yeah. That's a that's a cool picture. My two favorite. I've got you know I had. I've got a lot of really awesome pictures, but like my two, yeah. my favorites are this one here and the one when we're all in front of the, uh, the ring yeah. at yeah. UCC yeah. three or four yeah. or something like yeah. that. Like we all got, I have that one. one. Yeah. That's a cool one. All our, everyone's yeah. in Like everyone is in that picture. It's fantastic. Yeah. Not even so. the funny, the funny thing about that picture is like, there's a bunch of guys on there that are part of our team. <laughs> Yeah, but, they, but they wanted to be included. Yeah. But in it's that still picture. that you see but you see yeah. all those guys. Those guys were all from like um there's guys yeah, from no, it's all Karma love, and everything it's else. It's all yeah, love like, guys that we got yeah. along with and yeah. Ontario basically it was like the Ontario team. Yeah, it was. <laughs> we, I, uh, the Ontario yeah. team because we were always the away team. Yeah, I, I did an interview t today I, with this guy, um Dylan Volkers. He's doing he's writing a book on Canadian like MMA and stuff like that. And we were talking about um the original shows and the UCCs and yeah. stuff like that. And he's like the camaraderie between uh, Quebec and Ontario. And I'm like, um, he's like, was that shit real? I'm like, not really. Like it's all the fighters. Gonna... The fighters got along. Exactly. You know, there was a was... certain level of respect between the fighters because we were all, you know, kind of in that same boat. Yeah. Yeah. But like, the fans weren't so nice. The promoters no. weren't so nice to us. No, that was <laughs> so... exactly, that was my point. It was like, it was like the promoters, like, you know, this guy said this and gives this guy said that. I'm like, dude, I talked to that guy the other day. I know he didn't say that. Like, it's uh, when you have something like Ontario versus Quebec, you don't have to like start shit between fighters because people are just going to naturally pick no. sides anyway. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you didn't really, you didn't need to be greasy like that, but it still made it, still made it fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so it was we, made, we made some good friends though. Like, oh, for sure, man. Some I, good dudes out there. Yeah, in the, in Quebec, and we're still friends with those guys. Yeah, so like, yeah, I have like I have I still talk to David Loiso and guys like that. People I fought, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I'm like, it's, yeah, I don't, I don't got to be mad to punch you in the face. You know this, so yeah. you're the same. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. like we had our, all our best friends in one room trying to break each other's arms. Doesn't mean I don't like. Doesn't mean yeah, I don't yeah. love you. You know what I no, mean? No, absolutely. Um, my brother's on here right now. Like, I awesome. love my brother. We beat the shit out of each other our whole life. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. so, uh, no, there's, there's definitely that kind of feel with our, with our crew as far as, like, when we were training. Man, it was like, we're not, I'm not giving an inch. You're not giving an inch. And, and it was like beatdowns all the time. But, yeah. man, no, I, I hope you can vouch for this. But nobody cared more about you guys than me, man. Like, I would kill for you guys at the, at the time. Yeah. You know, I would do anything, you know, so yeah. that was, but in training, yeah, definitely in training it was it was hard, you know, it, well, you're, um, you're, you got a family full of alpha males, man. It makes it difficult. Like no one, we're all there because we're <laughs> fighters. No one wants to fucking, no one wants to lose. Like I'm not yeah. going to practice. I'm, I'm going to go to practice today and lose. That'll be fucking cool. I'm like, no, I'm going there to fuck people no, up. No, you know? I don't want to hurt no. anyone, but I certainly want to come out of that room a winner. And yeah, yeah. that's a, that's a tough day. You know what I mean? Trying to come out of that room as a winner every time, like, like, yeah. No, I, I remember been... vividly a few times where I I got mangled pretty good. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, yeah. I went home and I went home. I was like, oh my god, that was not a good one. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the thing. You could end it like you could have days when you could walk in that room and ever there's so yeah. much talent, and you come out yeah. and you're like, fuck yeah, it was my year the hammer. Yeah. And yeah. Two, two days later, well, I, I, someone else's I, nail. Yeah, I remember going home. I was like. I was in the Matrix today. I did some really cool <laughs> shit. Yeah, man. You know yeah. I, mean? I, was I did it. some. I did feeling some it. stuff today. I mangled some people, and, and then the other day I was like, "Oh, my my head hurts." <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, t totally. I, I get. I, I still. I, I guess it's just part of aging too. Where I'm watching my guys roll, or I'll jump in. And I'm like, I see people do stuff. I'm like, I know how to do that. I'm like, ugh. I can't yeah. really do that. I can't really do that anymore, though. Like yeah, in my yeah, head, yeah. I think I can, but I'm like something might. No, I, obviously, I think that your heart and your desire is always going to be there, and yeah. your grit and your determination. But you know, I think 
the especially that I think the two of us out of the crew are the two that are most mangled for some reason. Um, I know that I heard I watched your your last your, your Insta with Monkey and and, yeah. and you were saying about how you the potential obstacles that you're going to have to go through yeah. in in the near future. And I'm like, I'm in the same boat. Uh, I'm literally yeah. booked, booked. I had to pull some strings and I managed to get a place to do me, to do an MRI for me. And I, I squeezed it in for next week. Uh, and so I had to go to like a special clinic and all that. And yeah, man, it looks like I'm pretty certain that I'm going to need surgery on my shoulder. It's yeah. really, really bad. It's really bad. Yeah. So I think I was talking to a lot of guys lately about like I spent, <clears throat> I don't know, at least 10 years. I mean, do you think maybe 10 years holding pads for professionals, getting them ready yeah. for fights? Like once once I s stopped fighting, you know, I put all my eggs in, in the helping Shaw and being in the corner of you guys, being the second guy, you know, second in command kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And man, I held a lot of pads and did a lot of, you know, helping out to get, mm -hmm. try and getting guys ready for fights. And I think my shoulders are basically paying the price now. Like a lot yeah. of wear and tear that's accumulated to where, you know, I have some issues. And of course the, the ne it's all connected like between the neck and the shoulders. Yeah. yeah. Everything up here is a mess. Yeah. I feel you. I think um, it's the one thing that was really bad the last few months with both my shoulders, like extremely bad. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it, yeah, again, it's all comes from your, your neck and your traps and everything else. And, mm -hmm. and as shoulders is one thing I was really lucky with my whole career. It wasn't until like the last three, four years where I really got into kickboxing and holding pads and like training myself mm -hmm. where I'm like, really like maybe when maybe starting a like kickboxing career at 40 was like, <laughs> not a good idea. <laughs> but, hey, but I'm undefeated. It didn't surprise me one bit though. Yeah, I, I, I know did. you. <laughs> and I'm like, yep. Yeah. Undefeated, I man. I retire undefeated, <laughs> though. So, but I don't know, man. Like, I had I had a wicked scratch. It's that yeah, scratch, you know what I mean? And I still do, yeah, but, yeah. you know, now I'm really at the point where I'm like, dude, you are, like, it's, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm, pr I'm pretty much done, like, jiu-jitsu. Like, I don't, after I get these next couple procedures done, I'm like, there's a good chance I'm not even just showing the technique, you know what I mean? You gotta, mm. you gotta well, accept that, your, that yeah. was the, for me, that was like, okay. I got to try and retain something here. Mm -hmm. So I've literally in the last year or two, I'm like, okay, I, I need to at least maintain a certain a level and ability to teach classes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. I've wrapped my around my head around, like I'm never going to compete again. I always had that small hope that if everything fell in line perfectly and, and I can find the time to do all the things necessary to be done that I could potentially maybe have, you know, a little fun and just, just for, just not yeah. really to win anything, just to scratch that itch, as you were saying. Yeah, yeah. But it, I've come to a realization that it all, it all started with, of, of course, the neck issues being more persistent. And then uh, with, I do need surgery on the left. I have a torn labrum there, mm -hmm. but I just chose not to do it because basically based on, well, as long as it doesn't feel unstable, I didn't really want to go because it's a pretty invasive surgery, right? Labor mm -hmm. surgery is, is pretty yeah, invasive. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? It doesn't feel unstable, so I'm just going to leave it alone. Like, mm -hmm. again, I'm not fighting. I'm not training to fight. I roll for fun with my students yeah. whenever whenever I can. So I'm just going to leave it alone. I don't want to do it. But the, 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 the problem with the right is rotator cuff issues. And I, can, I have no strength. I'm losing strength. I can't raise my arm. Like, so yeah, that's scared. the same. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like... So I may have to do it. Uh, we'll yeah. see what the MRI uh, says. We're all going to have to get to it at some point. I'm, I'm just, I'm done putting it off because it's going to happen. And the longer you wait, the longer, mm -hmm. the longer we get, mm -hmm. the longer it's going to take. Here, we got a question here from, <laughs> from Kevin. Uh, what would you guys do differently? You go first. I'm Absolutely get, I yeah. fucking nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I'm the same way. No, I'm like, nothing, man. Look at us. I wouldn't like, change anything, man. I, I have the, no. I've made the, the greatest friends in the world no. and traveled the entire it's planet really and man. fucked people up. It was I wouldn't. It's, 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 if you were there during all those years and you went through those experiences, you would understand how we feel about it and why we wouldn't change anything. Mm -hmm. Like it was a, it was an exciting time. You know, everything yeah. was, it was new. It was, the MMA was new to the world and we were on the ground floor of, yeah. Yeah. Of, of something special. And I almost like we knew it and we hung on for like, we hung on to that. We got on yeah. that train and, 
never got off, you know? And yeah, yeah. So, um, no, definitely as, wouldn't change a thing. Uh, me either. I, I've said this before, though, and I'm like, I don't regret and I wouldn't change anything. But um, the one thing I would, uh, we'll say, adjust is I would act now, now being older and looking at my record and my career, I would have just fought everyone. You know, for because we were trying, we were trying to build something and, and not pad a record, but make good fights and this and that. Looking back, I'm like, my wins and my losses are equally as important to me now. So, mm -hmm. and I, mm -hmm. and it's not about the win or the loss. I like fighting. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. If you get your hand raised at the end, it's a bonus. I just like getting my fucking yeah. hands, my hands dirty. You know what I mean? So I think yep, I get that's it, the, only, the only thing is like yeah. I, there's fights I wish and I, I wish I didn't or our team didn't turn down because yeah. looking back now, what difference does it make? I should have mm -hmm. just got that extra hour in the cage or whatever, you know? Yeah, so yeah. yeah, but it's not. I, I mentioned something this in, in in my some some of my previous videos or comments or interviews where. You know, we didn't have a whole lot of opportunities, so we took whatever came our way. We right. took those opportunities. It wasn't yeah. like there was fights every week, you know, like yeah, or fights every month. We, so whatever shows popped up, whatever opportunities came, we like, yeah, sure. As long as it was within range of our weight class, like, why not? Like, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, when I fought Gavin, I'm a 45er naturally at the time. Mm -hmm. I I cut four pounds to make yeah. the weight. You know, I just didn't eat that yeah. morning you know or something and i made yeah. weight and, at, and i fought at 155 because getting fights weren't easy mm -hmm. you know and i took a fight with gavin who was like four and oh and a lot of hype behind him <laughs> i was supposed to get killed in that fight you know what i mean so mm -hmm. it, but you you did what you did you know you took the fights that came your way and that's it well when we started there was three weight classes you know and there's yeah. like you know was, i think my first yeah. i don't know it was crazy so uh oh sorry shout out strangle squad Okay, if you don't follow those guys on Instagram, you should. They're pretty. They're pretty <laughs> fucking funny, and they're always sending guys our way. So cool. strange, strange little creatures. But if you don't have them on Instagram, get on them. They're pretty. They're good dudes. Um, yeah, like yeah. There was my first fight was yeah. I was middleweight because there was lightweight, <laughs> and, yeah. then, and, and yeah. then and then middle and the, over two hundred pounds or two hundred ten or something like that yeah. was yeah. right. And then they just started adding and adding, and then went down to welter, and that turned into lightweight, and then uh, there was another five, six, seven weight classes. It's a lot different. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, but man, you, you, your your record at fifty five though speaks for itself, man. Come on, yeah, it was like, it was when good... you went to fifty five, you, you were beating people down, man. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you, it was your definitely a, a good smart decision. Oh no, it was it was the move, and um, so, uh, on to here, he asks, he's like, "What are your biggest lessons in, in victory and defeat?" and uh, it's the same lesson, man. Like I, I talked to someone t again today about it. Like my, my, for me, like humility is everything, whether you win or lose. I, it, it wasn't yeah. necessarily when I started, but after a couple ass kickings, like, yeah, you, yeah. you learn, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, it's, it's important not to gloat because you know what, after you lose, you know what it feels like to be that guy. It sucks. Right. Yeah, right. And I'm like, it I never, sucks I, so bad. <laughs> I, I never want to feel like that again. And, and you have to be conscious of someone else's while you're having the greatest moment of your life someone else is having the worst. They're worse. You know what I mean? And fighting George, that guy throttled me. And it was a, mm. literally the greatest thing to ever happen to me. You know what I mean? At the time, it was mm. a tragedy. We all, we all, our whole team that night, we lost our yeah, championships yeah. and life was shit. It was but, a uh, shitty night, man. <laughs> right. oh, my. But, and there was so much backstory to it. People oh, yeah, not aware. Yeah, that's fine. You know what I mean? And they don't even you know? need to know. But I, for me, I'm like, well, I got to diet. I got to get down to 155. And then I. He was I, huge, man. It was a monster. I knew as soon as it was he got He was enormous, man. You yeah, watched the he, video. Like, there's, you know, I have the DVD from that and, fight, from that show. And he's a stud. <laughs> he's a stud. He's huge. I remember he grabbed me and he grabbed me and I, and I was like, and he sat me down and I was like, fuck. I actually said, fuck. Like, <laughs> and like, and like, and I'll say, I say it over and over again. Man, if I fight guy, everyone's like, oh, you'll get him next time. I'm like, I'm not fighting that guy again. Like, yeah, I know if, no, no. if I fight that guy a hundred times, he's going to beat me a hundred times. He's the greatest of all time for a reason. He's a fucking savage, you know, and he deserves it because he, he's a real martial yeah, artist. Yeah, but look, and look he's how stud. far, look how far he's gone. He's a legend. Yeah, considered for sure. pound for pound great. Man, you shared the ring. Exactly, look, man. The pound for pound greatest yeah. of all time. How many yeah. people can say that? Win or yeah. lose, man. Win or lose. It's it's an it's an amazing. Like Fuck. it's definitely so, yeah you lost but it's something to be proud of for sure. yeah I know and again it put me on another path and that's how we we all George beating me put us all put us all in Japan you know what I mean yeah. like that's the way I look at him like okay well I went I got I went to Shudo I won to Shudo yeah. I got called up to Japan and then Tony went on to fight for world titles after that yeah, you know what I mean yeah. and like it was 
You know, and, it, op- and, it opens doors, man. It opens. Yeah, doors. yeah, yeah. So there's yeah. always something. There's always something to take from a win, but even more to take from a loss, man. There's their blessings. They, it sucks, and they and they feel horrible at the time. But you know, I mean, that's what really you know that's what really makes you as a competitor. It's like you because if you're winning, you're always going to do the same thing, man. It's like yeah. it's losing that makes you adapt and harden up. Well, I, I've always had the man. You know me, man. I I hated losing more than i enjoyed winning you know <laughs> like yeah, yeah. I, I took losses hard like mm-hmm. really hard and i just trained as you know insanely but um i think out of all of the group out of all of the crew i'm the one that has the least amount of experience as far as it comes with professional fighting i only had one pro fight mm-hmm. uh which was the gavin hessen fight but i had some i just you know bad luck man i, I some opportunities fell through and i just lost like because of two things that happened, I was like, man, I don't want to do this anymore. You know? yeah. I don't want Because I already had a job. I had a career. You know what I mean? And I was – so when that – remember that one fight that I, I went to – we went to Montreal. It was in the UGC. Yeah, yeah. I went. I weighed in. Everybody had weighed in. Promoter comes to me. and goes, oh, Marco, we're going to give your opponent to someone else. Because his opponent didn't show up. Yeah. Right? And here I am sitting in the stands watching. And it was – um. Uh, he was one of the guys that fought, ended up fighting Hominick. Uh What was his name? I don't know. You, you'll, you'll, uh, Quenville. Oh, okay, Jerry. Yeah, yeah, Jerry, yeah. Jerry Quenville. Yeah. So the promoter told me afterwards, he goes, I, he asked Quenville, who do you want to fight? Do you want Marco or do you want the other guy? Mm-hmm. Of course, obviously, we had a reputation. We had mm-hmm. a good team. So he wanted nothing to do with me. So mm-hmm. he ended up fighting the other guy. And beat him like in a minute and a half at an armbar. Mm-hmm. I was so mad because all I could think to myself was like, "Man, that's my minute and a half armbar." You know, like I just yeah. I was so uh, disappointed. And yeah, it's fraught with that. It's a disheartening game, man. It is. Yeah, it is and then so... another time we got, I got, you know, a, a fight. Everybody I think had fights for this particular card. We were all like training for it, and then literally like a week before. The the whole card imploded, and the guy said, "Okay, the, the whole thing went down, and they didn't have a show at all." Mm-hmm. So I just got, you know, I just got disheartened by that whole that because you train so hard, and you know, I I have always felt that I wasn't the the most talented in the crews in the crew, so I always had to like just train like cycle, train, 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 just to keep up with you guys. And I just got disheartened. I was like, man, I don't want to put myself through this anymore. And, yeah. And I just went into that. Like, you know what? I'm just gonna be a good training partner and help you guys out and be a training a dummy for you guys to beat up on yeah and that's then i fell into that role and i was okay with it yeah it's a, yeah man and you see you have one of the one of the best teams in the whole country man you clearly made the great decision you know but that it's people it's the stuff behind the p- scenes people don't see i mean i was explaining this earlier where uh just before i went to shooto like I, I, blew, I blew my knee out against Fredrickson at MFC, and I took like a year and a half off. And then I got in with WF F, Shudo, and I was supposed to fight Cage and Johnson. And I was like, I was an animal, man. I was like, I'm like, because I knew, I'm like, this is it. If you don't win this fight, like yep. you're gonna you're gonna retire. You're 30 years old, and you gotta do, you're sleeping on people's couches. You gotta do something with your life, right? And I'm like, <laughs> but two weeks two weeks before that fight, Cage did his knee in, and I'm like, oh my god, and. It, and I'm like, I went on a tear. I think I ripped up to the cottage and I got so drunk that I just threw up everywhere. <laughs> and then, uh, and then the next day I got a call from Ferraro who was, who was, um, who was, uh, managing me. And he's like, we got, we got you another opponent. And I'm like, holy fuck. I'm like, I'm still drunk. I'm like, all right, let's do it. But I, it was almost like I needed that day to kind of hit the reset yeah, button. I'm like, oh, and then, okay. we, and then age showed up and, and then I had like the fight of my career at that point. I knocked that guy the fuck out. And then, uh, and that's and that's what sent us on on the path. But like, I had between between uh, like after I came back from injury against Frederick uh, Blake, I yeah, I, I had five fights fall through. I think you know what I mean in a row. And I'm like, and why am I even doing this? All my time and energy and money and everything and you're training, else. man. You're training yeah, people. You're like, killing yourself. We, I think it's more understandable now where people kind of have an idea now with the UFC and all that, and you know, having you know experiences of like people cameras following people around and seeing what they go through but I, I i think people really don't understand the effort it takes to prepare if you're doing it the right way and it's so much work you know what i mean and it's so true and people's like oh the training is harder it's cliche right the training is harder than the actual fight 
It is. Fucking right it is. You know, for the Fight, most part. Fights 10 you know? minutes, 15 minutes. Yeah, you know? man. Training is four or five weeks, <laughs> you know. Like, yeah, and eating and eating <laughs> everything perfectly. And, this, and, yeah, and, and, and it's it caught, hard. And it cutting caught, weight. And, oh. and financially, like, it, the training costs you more than the fight. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think I lost way more money with MMA back then than I made. Oh, yeah. oh God, yeah. Because oh, so I. I, re I remember, I, I mean, I'm not trying, how do I put this where it doesn't, I don't come off like a douche, but I used to, when we used to go to Montreal, I used to pay for like two rooms on my mm -hmm. credit card to try and get our teammates places to stay. Yeah. Some, a, lot of the, a lot of the guys were broke as shit. Yeah, I didn't have a credit they card. Didn't have, <laughs> they didn't have money. Yeah. Right? I had a job and I had a credit card and I, like I, uh, you know, raised hey, the crap out of my credit card by paying for like hotel rooms and shit. Listen, I had to take. <laughs> but care I knew, but we needed the crew there, man. We needed yeah. the crew there. Like we're outnumbered. We're always the away team. A lot of guys came to support. Mm -hmm. So like, okay, come on, stuff four or five guys in one room, and that's the way it was. Oh, it was know? the greatest. Uh, Twenty guys in a van, like pissing, <laughs> yeah, pissing, in a, pissing in a Gatorade bottle. It was the best. Yeah. So I, I get like that. I lost. I never made any money ever. You know what I mean? No. It's a, but it was still worth it. I mean, part of the reason I left TKO UCC was I lost to George, which uh, I still got paid more money than in that fight than I did my entire career. I was, at that time, I got like six grand. It was a massive payday. You were right? a champ. You were a then, champ. And then the next fight they offered me was Gavin was Gavin Hessen. Then they offered me a hundred dollars. I was like, fuck <laughs> get you, out of here, man. Get the fuck out of here. Like that's former. Just like, you're the former champ, and they got yeah. you a hundred bucks. Yeah, and, you know, they did, yeah, and they just that's a slap in the face. So I was like, eat a dick, and I left. And it was, that was the greatest, and that was scary too because there wasn't anywhere to go. But mm -hmm. that taking that jump and just going, um, like, because when I lost to MFC, they weren't having me back. Like I got fucked on that. But going to going to Shudo was the best thing we ever did. You know what I mean? Like that changed. Like we went to Ironheart Shudo Japan, Ironheart Crown. We were everywhere. Like yeah, those, those are amazing. Like, people shows. made people don't understand. Okay, those those these shows may not be around now, but. They were huge back then. Like they were big, well-known cards with a lot of tough studs, studs yeah. like top-tier dudes. You know, so winning yeah. in those cards was was a big deal, and that's you know how Tony ended up in the UFC mm -hmm. and, and stuff was because of those cards. They had they they had a reputation for being you know good shows and uh, you know having good talent on it yeah and a lot but, of those guys that ended up being champions or winning in those cards ended up in the big show yeah it's crazy if you go back and look at those the, i remember being uh i think i can't remember maybe tony's fighting jeff curran and just being in that room and there was like and it was um Plegita. i'm like who the fuck is this guy <laughs> right like <laughs> hair down to his ass and shitty tattoos and everything everywhere i'm like who's this guy then i watch him i was like holy crap that guy was an animal and uh there's gideon ray and all these all these yeah, 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 all these yeah. guys like were on that show like yeah, shooto what yeah. shooto was amazing people should go back and watch shooto and like oh man i don't know do you know do you know why they went down do you know why they've have, like not as running those cars that they used to run i know sure that, i know they're still around like in Chicago but, and stuff like that, like those shows. No, I'm talking in Japan. Like uh, I know they still run them in Japan, but they don't have the same exposure, the same no. talent, the same, you know, that it was back then. So UFC, man, that's all there is to it. Like the UFC kind of, uh, when Pride went over to when when they, the UFC absorbed Pride, it bit Japanese um, MMA kind of. It didn't die, but it changed. Is Everything it one went, of those things where they felt they lost face, kind of thing? I don't think so. I think I think from a global perspective, though, now the cage was the thing. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And I think that changed. I think that changed a lot because there is still Shudo and Pancrase and uh, yeah, and, they're, and they're just and every, not. But you don't see them anywhere because what you know what what it was is Shudo was amazing because for us who were one fifty fivers and down to be the best in the world, that's where you had to go, mm -hmm. right? And then when the UFC started putting in the one fifty fivers and the forty fivers, now you yeah, wanted to go yeah. to UFC. So I think that took yeah. a lot of the attention off the Japanese scene for, for us. Well, like I think you, because, because I think the, the UFC built itself into this huge monster that it became the top tier of the sport. And anyone and anyone globally who wanted to to do well or or be a champion, a world champion in the UFC, in, in the world of MMA, wanted to be in the UFC, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. we all have this this you know when we first watched Hoyce and 
and you know, and it built to what it was, you know, I think that became the always became like the goal. Mm-hmm. But man, you and you know, I know it. Pride for life, man. Come on, yeah, it's the best. <laughs> so even Pride had too many rules. You know what I mean? Let's go IBC. Pride was, Let's go IBC. Pride was amazing. Man. IBC. I want to go IBC with the uh, the, 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 fish, the fish net on the bottom rope. The U. I don't think the UFC has the same level of spectacle that the Pride had. You know, and the same level, like it. It was incredible. Pride was awesome, man. I, I know I, it was. It was really cool. I. I, uh, yeah. I. I wish I got to see one. You know what I mean? It would be cool. Yeah. Like. To, like, 60, 000, sixty thousand sixty thousand people in the <laughs> Antonio got the corner corner at Pride, you know, how cool is that? Like that yeah. Antonio's got just the most amazing story. Like li- living with in Japan and both training with all these legends and just yeah. going to all, every K one and, and and Pride and stuff like that. Like he was he was in the press conference when the UFC Dana walks white walks out and he's like, Oh yeah, by the way, we bought Pride. Fuck off. <laughs> Tony's Tony's like, What what just happened? What what happened? <laughs> yeah, and it died like that, you know what yeah. I mean? It was a shame. I, 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 that, that's too bad. I wonder what, what I mean. It was Saki Kibara, right? Mm-hmm. Didn't he realize that if UFC came in, he took everyone, that they weren't going to run UFCs in Japan? Maybe once in a blue moon. Like I don't, I don't know. I'm not really sure why they did it. I think maybe because there's still only been a couple Japan shows. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know why they did it, other than. They got a wicked deal. They bought up all the contracts and all the likeness rights and, you know what I mean, and, and everything else, right, and it's brought it over. And it's a shame because all those guys that came from Pride who were the greatest, they were already, like, on the downslope. They were already t- – by the time Krokop got to the UFC, like yeah. – They were they, not in their prime anymore. They had yeah. some really tough wars too, which – Yeah. Well, oh, when people don't – when you know, people didn't – like, I don't know why people keep saying about, about Krokop. That's a good example. Like – Oh, he he was never the same man. The guy destroyed his knee. Why? That's mm-hmm. why you didn't you didn't see him kick the high kick as much when he came to the UFC or as often, you know, because yeah. he literally destroyed both his knees and had yeah. several surgeries, and he could never, you know, plant the same or kick the same again. Well, so, it, and look at a guy like Nogueira. Like after what, oh, oh, Nogueira, Nogueira spice with Fedor, some of the most violent things you've ever seen. And uh, is how, how after uh, going through something like that, you come uh, to another ex- organization man, perform, the fight, you know? the fight with Bob Sapp. Watch that <laughs> fight again. Uh, it's like, how did you not die several I know. times? Jiu-Jitsu, yeah. man. Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, a, a, amazing. That, and that, that was the beauty of, of Pride as well. It's like the talent level was amazing. And, no. man, but the, progress, uh, the progressing vibe to it was always awesome. Uh, you know what I mean? They, yeah, made the, yeah, they, yeah. they had characters who were larger than life. And that yeah, was yeah. awesome. But that's that's what made it fun, though. That, that yeah, they have yeah. The person, you know what I mean? You know, and I think, you know, love him or hate him, Connor brought some of that to the UFC. Yeah. And UFC and that's basically what's taken him to the next level here. You know what I mean? They were kind yeah. of becoming a little flat, a little dull, and he co- here he comes in this crazy Irishman. It was, it yeah. Was it's um, the, the, the UFC is generic, like, uh, American football now, you know what I mean? Like every walkout's mm. the same, everything's a statistic. I went to, mm. when I was in Singapore um, uh, for the for the world's, like we went to 1FC and it was like being at a pride, like the 50, yeah, yeah. like the walkout yeah. with 50 foot screens and fucking fireworks. And it was, yeah, oh yeah, man, yeah. it was like, it made your, it made your hair like, I like, I like stand up. One's, one's good, amazing. They have some crazy fights on there too. Yeah. yeah. I like their format, how they have, uh, they got their white tie with, with gloves, the MMA the, gloves, <laughs> right? And then they have ring, they have cage, they have MMA in a ring, MMA cage. Like it's pretty cool. The one we went to was all in a ring, but it had different rule sets all night. It was pretty. It was pretty cool. And it uh, makes it and, entertaining, more versatile. And yep. God and, bless those guys, man. They, they oh, really know how to appreciate the, the yeah. art. And, and they are yeah, uh, awesome. They and treat, it gives opportunity to fighters that are not too comfortable with MMA, like or they mm-hmm. don't want to do MMA. Mm-hmm. So they. they they give opportunities to some of these guys who are great fighters in the Muay Thai realm and stuff like that. And to give them opportunities to fight and showcase their skills and stuff like that. So it's awesome, man. It's cool. Yeah. It's very cool. They, they, <laughs> um, they, the, 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 the Muay Thai with four ounce gloves is pretty scary shit, man. <laughs> like you got to have a big old set to be getting in there. Like yeah. it, change, it changes everything. And, but yeah. yeah, the skill level is the, it's amazing. Yeah. Like they're really good. Yeah. Um, I hope one day I get to go to, um, to a glory. I think 
that'd be pretty cool to see. I haven't been to one they're of those. They're still going yeah. on, right? They're still on. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're, yeah, they're, they're still on. They're crushing man, Joe, it. Joe, that kid, Joe, man. Yeah. He did Pacific it right. Joe, man. man. He did it he right. Did it. Good kid. I know. I mean, he's, he's my, he's my man crush. Like I'm a, I'm, I, a big, like, I'm a fan, man. I'm a fan. And he's doing a great job with the commentating. As he's well. very good. He's Super very smart. Yeah. Man, I, I know that, you know, I know that uh, he, the hunger is there still in him. Right. I know you can feel it. You can feel oh, it yeah. there. You know what I mean? He's but just, I, man, dude, you did the smart thing. Like, you, yeah, that's you, exactly it. You like, did the smart thing. Like, if I, if I was in his, if I had the talent to be in his position, I can guarantee you, I would have made the wrong choice. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, but he, he, he knew what he had, yeah, and uh, yeah. you know what I mean. It's, and I'm sure he wakes up every day going, "I wish I like." I've, well, we've talked extensively about it, and of course, he's yeah. like, he wants to fight. He's like, good, but look, like, look what, I, look at all the things he's built. It like his yeah. gym is killing it. He helps train world class guys. He travels to planet doing what he loves. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm um, yeah. like, you made, you made the right. He's good at it. He's very, very good. good. He's yeah, a, so. he's a super incredible, like, intelligent guy, and like yeah. his breakdowns. Um, like commentating yeah. is much more difficult than people think. Like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's not easy to no, say. No, you really have to have an yeah. in-depth understanding of the sport, mm-hmm. man. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I think that's why you, you notice a lot of the guys that are commentating, let's say, for the UFC, because that's what we're exposed the most to. Yeah. A lot of the guys that I enjoy listening to are the fighters or former fighters. Cor- Cormier, I mean? and Cormier and um, – yeah. Uh, what's his the name? little guy the little guy the, the little guy right <laughs> they're, they're both very they're both very good because they, yeah, understa- they, they understand they understand the interest i even like bisman man i yeah. like bisman as a commentator as, I do. Yeah, I, I, i'm the same i, do, I, did, I, like I didn't it. at first but chill sonnen is i'm on the fence with him <laughs> yeah. sometimes i think he's great other times i'm like oh god yeah no <laughs> it know, is but... it is a gift and uh i think especially with kickboxing and boxing as well like for me uh People think this, they're like, oh, boxing is the easiest because all you have to do is punch. I'm like, no, man. It's no. <laughs> so maybe probably one of the, everything's no. different, but it's much more intricate because you only have two weapons. You know what I mean? You yeah. have your footwork and no. hands. Like, I think the more, uh, the less ways there is to win, the, the more of a, it is, a surgeon you got to be. Here. Sweet science, man. Sweet science. Because, okay, you only have, they say, okay, you only have two weapons, mm-hmm. right? But your main, main, the only main thing you're worried about is getting hit in the head. Okay, mm-hmm. the body, yes, but you're only going to get knocked out by getting hit in the head. So if you, as long as you keep your hands up, right, and you, and you have good head movement and footwork, so it takes like real skill to knock somebody out in boxing. Oh, absolutely. And it, it takes real skill to, 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 to really put it on someone in in the boxing ring within boxing rules. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot harder than people think. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, a you lot know, harder. The uh, so, someone explained this to me where the the, uh, the art of wrestling isn't the takedown; it's not getting taken down, right? It's a box. Mm. It's the same thing. And like boxing is not about throwing punches; it's about get, not getting punched. I mean, you yeah. can fight, you can fight, or you can box, right? Yeah. If we want to fight, we just go to square up till someone falls just over. Stand upon it, just yeah. stand and bang. <laughs> right. If you want to box, it's a it's a yeah. it's a game of tag. Footwork, you know? head movement, right? Defensive movement. It's yeah, the whole it's, package, it's, man. Very, very, very complicated sport, like intricate, mm-hmm. too, right? But it's just, it's easier yeah, to understand for people. Uh, uh, Tyson is perfect, perfect example. Yeah, you know what I mean. Okay, he can knock fools out because he had mega power. But you watch his footwork, the way he moved, how he created angles to to hit people. It's beautiful, right? Like, yeah, man, it's just beautiful, right? Yeah, but it wasn't just standing in front of someone and throwing haymakers. No, no man, man. It, it's, it's, it's art. Art. Oh, I love watching. Him. <laughs> he he takes very little damage, and the way that he overlaps his punches, it's like he's he's still got one in your face while well, the other one's coming right behind it. He's just no one could do it yeah, like him. He's yeah, he's yeah. a and he's he's a smart dude as well too, right? Yeah. Like his yeah. game plan with with uh, uh, homeboy with the uh, the big stupid outfit on there. His last one, I'm drawing a blank, but he uh, just leaned to, he just leaned on him all night. You know what I mean? Like yeah. made him tired, like because he is a monster of a man. Why wouldn't you take advantage of your weight? Right? But yeah, yeah the guy, yeah. yeah, man, I'm like, I when I I see I see a guy like someone just brought up Floyd. Like Floyd makes guys miss and then makes them pay. I think that the sexiest thing ever, man. It really is cool yeah. to watch. I don't like I, I really don't like him as a human being, but oh, as no. a bo- but as a boxer, he's. He's brilliant, man. Yeah. He's absolutely brilliant. Well, but, the thing is, but most people, the thing is, most people just want to see the knockout. Yeah. Where, like, I always say this to a lot of a lot of people that, like, we, when we watch a fight, or when we're watching a fight, 
it's we're not watching it with the same eyes of like the average person who just mm-hmm. watches a fight. You know, I mean, we almost like analysts. You know, we we yeah. know what they're doing and what they're. You know, so many times it's like, oh man, that uh, that guy's gonna get knocked out, and and people are like, how? What do you mean? I was like, you'll see. And then boom, they get knocked out. And then they asked me why? Because the footwork, man, his feet were in the wrong place, mm-hmm. and he was so clear for that one punch to land, and it kept landing, right? And eventually he got hurt, and then he got knocked out. And again, it's because we we see the whole thing. We're just not watching it for the sake of like, oh, look at these guys fight. Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. And then and then you have guys who actually specialize in that watch it. Like we've got a good idea because we're the jack of all trades. We're no boxers, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, but yeah, then, and then, but you have guys that can break that down so well. Like Even further. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, people, for the most part, people are watching a fight and we're watching the art of it. You know what I mean? Like yes. the, the small yes. things makes a big yeah. difference. Yeah. Make a big di- we, we can appreciate this. The, the, we don't necessarily need to see a knockout to appreciate a good mm-hmm. fight. Oh, know? I see. Yeah. I see. Uh, I I watch I watch the wrestling in an MMA match or on the cage or anything. I'm like, oh, that was amazing. And other people are like, yeah, get a robe. That was oh, the yeah. one. That was the one. I think element that became an, a, a basically a, a a new art that was created. Oh, for the sure. Whole, the whole fighting in the cage or cage fighting is 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 a whole new thing, man. You know, because it's it's there's a lot of intricate things that you can do in there right between mm. strike striking control takedowns it's like totally it's a whole new thing that oh. people have to learn yeah it is it really yeah. is like it's and, uh it's uh the, the, the wall the wall can be your best friend or your worst enemy it's how, how you play it right <laughs> and and uh you know what i you know what i did learn working with because i have i run a pro uh class a pro practice at my place every week and i uh, I do all the ground and pound and the wrestling and wall work at my place and Cal Sam, they do all the kickboxing, right? But what I did learn was when I keep my higher um, level uh, jujitsu guys behind and put them on the wall with the pro MMA guys, they do fucking awesome because they're just doing jujitsu standing up. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 their their yeah. back's against the wall and you're pushing the head and moving your hips. And it's, all, it's not that much different than being flat on your back. You just kind mm-hmm. of, it's, yeah, you know it's what I mean? just a different plane, right? Yeah. The, yeah. the same principles apply. Yeah, that's cool. That's yeah, cool. It, yeah, I did notice that because of my guys that just do jujitsu like happen to do really well, right? And in the end, they get shit kicked because they're not just, they're just not as mean. You know what I mean? MMA guys are dicks, right? And jujitsu guys are like, hey, so you got to beat that out of these kids. But that's the, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, do you have do you have? I know we've talked about this before, but like because you're a, you're you love Brazilian jiu-jitsu in, like every aspect of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you, and if, whether it's old school, like we learned or modern, like, does it, does it frustrate you that modern jiu-jitsu has taken kind of the, uh, some of the fight out of it? You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I have to try and take this approach where I was like, I appreciate the, the, the innovations and how creative these guys are. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate <clears throat> The, the how talented they are, how good they are, uh, both on the physical aspect where these are guys are better trained physically, mm-hmm. you know, they're better prepared. Um, and but I don't like is the strategy. I don't think old school and new school one is better than the other. To be to to be honest, uh, there's advantages playing with playing a fundamental game, and there's advantages with playing like a lapel guard. Mm-hmm. What I don't like is the strategy that people are using and how they abuse the rule system because, man, a win now is, is important, right? So people are okay with just strategizing to win by points or advantages instead of, like, going for the kill every time, submission, submission, submission. So I think the mentality has changed, not mm-hmm. necessarily the skill of the athletes oh, yeah, or the yeah, ability sure. of the athletes. I think the athletes now are better physically, you know, they're better prepared, even technically, you know, a purple belt today would mangle a lot of black belts back then. Oh, oh absolutely. You know what I mean? Like no question, but what's missing is the, the, the chase for the sub. Like I want to tap you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in a lot of our matches back then, there was no points. Like our first few tournaments, there was no points. There's no point system. It was just like a referee's decision. I think it mm-hmm. was, you know what I mm-hmm. mean? So, we didn't have to worry about getting our guard passed or whatever. We'd just be like, try to submit, try to submit, try to submit. So I think that's what's changed is people are okay with strategizing and 
there's so much like 10 minute matches in IBJJF black belts. It's too long, man. Mm -hmm. I think it's too long because what happens is like if people strategize, they don't like, they don't want to get tired. So they don't go crazy. They don't want because they know if they run tired is it's going to cost them. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and so there's the 50, 50 game. Another thing I don't, I don't like is the, the pass prevention guard. Mm -hmm. What I mean is there's a lot of that nowadays. Like the guard is, they're just using it not to let the guy pass. They're not trying to sweep, right, they're not trying yeah. to submit, you know, they're just nullifying guys so they can't pass. And we have this traditional mindset. If you can't pass the guard, you lose. Mm -hmm. So a lot of top players are, are losing. And I don't think it's fair. I think the, the, the guy who's just using the guard to nullify should be penalized too. If mm -hmm. you're not trying to sweep, if you're not trying to submit, you should be penalized. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the referees are penalizing the guard players enough, you know, for more action. And I know we're, we've got 20 minutes and we're not running out of time, but I like the new rules that the Abu Dhabi Pro has implemented. You know, I like those rules. I think it's going to change. Like, all ma all regular matches besides the final. Like, so all regular matches are six minutes. There's a lot more penalizing going on. And there's, uh, <clears throat> so advantages are one point. Penalty is one point. And I like that because you just have to worry about one score. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about, okay, points, advantages, penalties. No, it's all one score. Mm -hmm. And the good example is like, I bring this up a lot, is the Marangali fight with Keenan Cornelius at two, uh, the world, I think last year's world championship or the year before. Well, man, uh, Marin Galli had 13 advantages. He almost submitted Keenan several times, right? Almost swept him several times. Keenan swept him with like a minute left, got to two points and won. Yeah, because that's wrong. Points, because points supersede advantages and so on and so on. With the new system, Marin Galli would have won 13 mm -hmm. to two, right? So I like, the new, I like that system. I know some people are against it. I like it. I think it's great. And if you're going to get people to follow jiu-jitsu more and more and more, they need a simplified, like, rule set so it's easier for the average Joe to understand. Yeah. You know? And it, it pushes more action. There's video replay so you can – your coaches can argue stuff. I really like the the, 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 the new rules that the AGP is pointing out uh, more than I do the, with the IBJJF. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, again, I don't think the skill is the problem. I think the rules are the problem. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. And got, they said the technique has changed so much because people are playing to the, yeah. to the rules, right? Like, yeah, like yeah. You, yeah, you just got to hit hit the advantages. That's it. You don't even got to submit guys you get, or sweep them. You got to almost, you can almost, you're playing to almost sweep you. You know what I mean? Like, it's, eh. yeah. I, I'm, ho I I'm hoping that there's this new wave coming in and there's a couple of young kids coming in that are very aggressive for the sub. And I mm -hmm. like those kids like that. Uh, Roberto Jimenez, Jimenez. Yep. Man, that kid wants your back. He wants to finish you. And you can see that in him. Like, he's just go, 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 trying to finish you. He didn't want to tap you out. And there's a few of these young kids coming up that have that mentality. And they don't want to play the point game. They don't, mm -hmm. they don't want to play the advantage game. They want to finish. Mm -hmm. And I can appreciate that. Like, I, I really – there's some young kids coming up that I'm like, okay – there's some hope for this board, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I just, man, I'm always like, get, get the takedown smashed. Like, I, like, the original point system was, like, it's real, a real fight. Take your opponent yeah. down, kill his defense, dominate position, mount, take his back, kill him, right? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, if, I, yeah. if, I was, if I was actually hitting you, what would happen? I'm going to yeah, punch your yeah, punch yeah. face until you turn your back yeah. and they'll choke you, right? Like, yeah. that's how, like, that's how I break down for my kids. I'm like, this is why their points are like this. But yeah, throwing in the all the advantages and this stuff. But like, I'll always love the creativity of yeah, modern, right. Modern jiu jitsu. It's, it's like snowboarding, it's or skateboarding, or anything. You know, what I mean, like always yeah. going bigger and better and making up cool yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It. I love yeah, it. I think it's great. Hey, so you want to answer this question? You answer What's this that? question first. What do you think of combat jiu jitsu? <laughs> I think we're on the same boat. Stay, with that dude, one. like, grow a set and put on some four ounce gloves or fucking. Or stay stay home, like or just do just do I don't watch it. I watched one, uh, one show. I was like, no, not interested. No. I, I I'm, you know, and if you watch the last few shows, the guys are not hitting at all. It's just basically no gi grappling matches. Yeah. So hey, you do know? you do you make your guys uh, roll open hands every once in a while? Uh, I had plans before this whole thing to bring that back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was gonna do like every last week of the month. 
So the fourth week of the month, there was going to be Jets with Hits month uh, mm-hmm. week. Yeah. Jets with Hits week. Hey. Right? Yeah. And they, you know, the guys would have to buy some MMA gloves. But of course, it would, it would, I want it to be where it's like, it's not for knockouts. We're not yeah. rolling to knock each other out. We're rolling to keep each other honest. Mm-hmm. Like, if I can tap you in the face, bad news, man. Exactly. Right? So how- it's, it was more to keep people honest and to make them understand distancing and how to use like a more fundamental game of overhooks, underhooks, and controlling people, yeah. and keep, you know, yeah. control, managing distances and stuff like that. I think it's good. I think it, if you, you know, do it the right way, it can be done. Yeah, you know? so the, the the main thing is safety, right? We don't want yeah. people getting hurt. Like it's we don't. I don't want it to turn into MMA fights, or else I would yeah. have an MMA gym. Yeah, you know exactly. What I mean? So what I what I do, I don't do it regularly, but every once in a while, I'm like, okay, guys, open, you can everyone can do some open hands sort of thing, right? Mm-hmm. And just because really, if how good is your jiu-jitsu if your opponent can wind up and hit you, right? Mm-hmm. So it's important to so if people guys, slap again, here and that, to right? Bring, to bring to bring a little bit of integrity to the to to what we're doing, right? Like. Again, keeping you honest, like, come on. Okay, we love the sport. It's a great sport. It's a fun sport. But when you take some aspects out of it, you know, yeah, it's it's you know, not it's not the truth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I, I struggle sometimes because, like, I full out learned jujitsu to fucking kill people, not play a, <laughs> not play a sport, and that and that bug and that bugs me because because you know you, we came up the same. That so it bothers me in that in the what kind of the way the sport's gone, and it also it bothers me the fact that it's become such a sport because now you're getting belts based on your level of competition, not your, on your level of knowledge. You know what I mean? Like, you know, users, a bunch of brown belts out there. I know you can't, they, they're fucking studs, but they can't teach for shit. They have nothing to pass on. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. that's, I don't, I, mean, I don't, I think that I agree with what you're saying where you got to be careful with a lot of these guys that specialize, you know, they're specialists. Because, okay, they can get away with this special you know, aspect of their game, their whole career, up into black belt, they win a bunch of championships, and they want to open an academy, but there's no depth to their knowledge base. There's no depth to, like, you see some of these well-known guys all of a sudden going back and trying to learn self-defense and going back and trying to learn the fundamental game. And, and, and because they just focus so much so much on their, what they specialized in, mm-hmm. you know, and now they... They understand that okay, well, you can't make every single person specialize in your game when you mm-hmm. open an academy. You gotta have good fundamentals and for you know. sure. So I have uh, I've got a black belt, the big stupid Nufio. He's out on the East Coast and he's like he's like I'm with all these like stud brown and black belts, uh, you know, once a week and they're sitting there with a pen and paper writing of what I'm teaching. What you showed me in the first like three months. You know what I mean? Because which is like smash neon belly mount, like little things. You know what I mean? That people just don't focus on anymore because they are so on the on the uh, competition side of things. You know what I mean? And yeah. and like it's it's it was no different than we when we were when we started. Really, people wanted to do a flying arm bar, but they didn't know how to do a break fall. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Everyone want everyone wants to flash. No one wants to do throw a million jab crosses. Yeah, yeah. So they want a spinning back yeah. fist, man. That's just yeah. that's yeah. that's what it is, man. So. Yeah, but it's the jab crosses that's that's gonna lead to the path of landing that perfect spinning back fist. Yeah. You know, what and, I mean? and and it's the fundamentals that will keep you alive. I say it all mm-hmm. the time, man. Self yeah. defense, self defense first. I'm like, of course, yeah. I want you to win. I want you to not, uh, but I want. I'd rather you not die first. You know what I mean? Like, like I don't know whether that's MMA or jiu jitsu, wherever you need to be able yeah, to defend still, yourself. It, yeah, it falls in the same. You know, I, yeah, it's the same thing. I I, I focus. Even on a like a BJJ aspect, sport aspect, with beginners, I always focus on escapes first. Defending escapes, protect yourself, not letting your guard pa- get past, you know, like pass prevention drills and all the basic, basic stuff. Because, man, offense is easy. I always say the same thing. Offense, learning offense is easy. Learning mm-hmm. defense, you spend your whole entire career it's off, it's off perfecting it. that, you know, yeah. so. I, I, uh, no, or- someone said that this, this, uh, these, these, these cats from the the strangle squad, these they just keep going. Eh? They just like they don't they don't let up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I do. I, they asked the question about. We have about ten minutes left. So I just want to yeah. keep track of that. Um, he asked if the the sport was important for the growth of the of the art. Uh, undoubtedly, come on, hundred percent. Undoubtedly, it's, like, it's, we would not have we would not be having these successful academies that we have and the successful teams that we have and. The, the growth of jiu-jitsu and tournaments that we have and lots of opportunities for a lot of different people if the sport hadn't exploded uh, yeah. when it did in the early 2000s when 
the confederation decided to move the IBJJF to most to, to California. So yeah, that was a huge thing. Yeah, and it's all it's very it's very fashionable as well. You know what I mean? Like no other martial art is as fashionable as jujitsu is. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you don't see judo guys out there marketing ten million types of types of geese and this and that. Or like yeah. there's no there's other something. Martial- there's definitely a certain culture. Yes, it's it totally. It's own certain certain culture that you know you have to do certain things. Yeah, right? I so. find I find the Thai boxing I like it a little bit, but they don't have as like, but not quite the same. You know, what I mean, it's, it's there's something really cool and popular about Thai boxing as well. But the jiu jitsu thing is like, yeah, man, like everyone wants the latest gi and the coolest shit and whatever else. Where every mm-hmm. other martial arts with a gi on is like white, white gi, no patches. This is that. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like no. that's it, right? So there is parts of that I really I'm I like. I like man, part- I'm, I think we're all, we're all the same. Me, you, and Monkey is like ah, white geese. <laughs> yeah, I won't yeah. wear a gun man. Like I can't. I, I, got, I, like a a black, I got a black. I got a black. I got a black one now. It was a gift, and I actually do really like it. But for the most part, I'm like pure white gee, nothing so, on yeah. it. I'm, I'm cool. I like I'm, I like a clean gee too. Yeah. 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 yeah so, would you, uh, would I'm your... like we started joking around. I was like, man, I'm not interested in being a NASCAR driver. <laughs> yeah, totally right. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Or yeah, it's yeah. I don't know, man. I, I will, but you better be paying me. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not aware. But yeah, remember, not remember aware. we started. We we had all these geese and logos and shit all over. We didn't even know what it was. We just knew the Brazilians were wearing it and it looked cool. So we're like, I yeah, want that that's too, it. right? It was so, cool at the time. Hey, do you still have like old old geese? Do you still have like have like an old Krugan no, or anything like that? No, no I. No, no. I still have my. No, dirty... I don't. I don't. I don't. I get attached to to, to stuff. I have as my first like, gi. Like geese, I don't even have my like. You know how everybody keeps their belts? I don't have any of my, like, the white, blue, purple, brown. I don't have those belts. No, I... No, man. There was only one. I was... <laughs> my laser beam, man. I only wanted the one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't care about the rest. They were just, like, you know... Stepping, I don't have... Stepping stones, man. I don't have you know? mine either, but mostly because I didn't have a place to live for half of it. So, I just, <laughs> I just lost shit. I have my... No, I have, man. I, I only cared about the black belt. That's it. I have my, my black belt from judo was the same one i used for when i got my black belt in jiu-jitsu and then i gave i gave my uh i gave my black belt i gave man child his black belt so i and he was moving away so i gave him my black belt for him to keep and monkey wore my black belt in his wedding as well nice when he got married he wore my black belt and i was like oh thanks buddy so yeah so that thing's uh, it's (laughs) up in the north northwest territory somewhere and then munduruka gave me a new one so i got a cool belt now so yeah i got a couple I've, i've had a few where people you know they're nice and they buy them for me and they put my name on it and stuff like that. And that's very generous on their part, but I, I don't really necessarily wear them. I just have them you yeah, know, yeah. put away somewhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, I only have like two belts that I wear that I like, you know, and, and they're, of course, they're my ADA, my friend, my ADA belt. <laughs> <laughs> Got to represent. Okay. So listen, we're going to run out of time and my phone's going to fucking die. So plug everything you need to plug. Go. Uh, Coffee with Costa at this time is where you guys can just listen to me ramble on with my good friend, Michael on. Uh, and that's about it until we uh, get back to normal here. Uh, and then of course, go die tournament. I hope that goes down in October. I really hope that that yep. is not going to, we all, we don't know where that's going to be at, but definitely going to need everybody's love and support for go, you got for, it, man. go die. But uh, yeah, just come right. hang out with me. Coffee with Costa on YouTube. When, and when, sorry, when do you run that? It's Tuesday, Thursdays now? No, I'm doing Monday, Thursdays now. Oh, okay. Because, okay, because well. it was just logistically like three times a week trying to upload it and edit it. It's, it's a lot of work. Lot of, it's a lot of work. So I went to just two times a week for my, right for my friend's sake. All right. So All right. Mondays and Thursdays at noon. Sounds good. Okay. Well, let's get the hell out of here. Uh, if anyone, thank you so much, brother, for list, having me on here, man. I of course, you. man. Big hug, I miss man. you too. I miss you too. Hey, anyone lo- watching, listening, on uh, on this page on Saturday night, we got another live musical guest. Yeah. Come have a drink and uh, drink with us, and uh, and we're gonna tell a lot of lies and dick and fart jokes. Okay. Wake it, wake it, wake it. All right, peace, Marco. <laughs> See you later, buddy. Take care, brother. Take care.